urging everybody that's watching this video to contact Stephen Anderson, his church. There's some so-called King James ministry that's just a puppet of Anderson. He's got him fronting for him, sending these videos out, or the videos and these emails out. Contact them and demand this. What do you think of a man that lets a pornographer in his pulpit? Why, what are you going to do about Stephen Anderson letting a pornographer in his pulpit? Proverbs chapter 12 verse 17 says, He that speaketh truth showeth forth righteousness, but a false witness deceit. Sam Gipp, you're a false witness. You've lied about me, about my ministry. Didn't even, know how to, didn't even say the ministry name correctly. It's King James Video Ministries. My name is Brian Denlinger. Okay, I met you back in 2010. Mike Collingwood's church, Pottstown, Pennsylvania. I shook your hand, told you I appreciate the work that you do. And you don't have the guts or the decency to say my name. And then you, you, you take my research that I've done exposing Steven Anderson, the videos that I've brought out about Paul Wittenberger being involved in Hollywood and the wicked movies and things, and Anderson teaching replacement theology and all the other work that I've done against Steven Anderson. And you have the nerve to take that and then twist it and say that I am Anderson's puppet? You got some serious pride issues, Gip. You really do. I mean, you know, oh, Steven Anderson libel and slander and all this other stuff. What about me? You try to put down my whole ministry. Ten years in the ministry. I can't tell you how many people have gotten saved through this ministry. Lots and lots of people getting saved. People turning to the King James Bible. People, I can show you many, many countless letters of people that have left Stephen Anderson's cult because of watching my videos. I understand the danger of Stephen Anderson, right? I've met people here in the local area that I've talked to that were turned away from Stephen Anderson because of the videos the Lord has helped me to do. And you have the nerve to come out and say that I'm his puppet? You're a deceiver, Sam Gipp. Let me just show you exactly what happened here, okay? People send me things, hey, you got to check this out, check that out, and whatever else. So I find out about this video of Steven Anderson attacking you, Sam. And so I thought to myself, okay, I'm going to go over there and I'm going to defend Sam Gipp. So I go over and I watch it, and Anderson's doing his typical little yelling and screaming and things like this. I'm going to show you some screenshots. And he shows this little clip. I thought, okay, I'm going to be fair. I'm going to be objective. I'll watch the clip. And I saw it's like, oh, he looked like he cut it at the end there. So I posted this. You can see there, I said, where's the whole video? All right. You know, where's this thing at? First of all, before that, actually, I'd, I'd gone and to this uh, Gomez's uh, church thing there, and I tried to find the sermon so I could hear it for myself. But it's password protected. All the archives are password protected. I kind of find that interesting. I mean, who's really running the cult here? All right. Some guy that password protects the sermons? That's kind of a little bit odd, but you know, I couldn't find it. So I go to Anderson, I say, where's the whole thing? Anderson posts the whole thing. And I, I wrote the comment. I said, okay, yeah, you didn't take him out of context. I watched it. He didn't take you out of context. His conclusions were wrong. All right, we're going to talk about that here in this video. I'm going to try to make this short. I understand you're busy and whatever else. I'm busy too. But uh, let's actually look at the text, right? Hopefully you're not afraid to do that, Gip. I know I don't have a PhD and everything. I'm just a, a nobody, I guess, to you. You don't even say my name. You attack my ministry and lie about me. But you don't even have the decency to name me. Matthew chapter 1. Let's, let's look at the text here. Matthew chapter 1, verses 20 through 25. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, get a hold of that one, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Okay, 
let's consider a few points here. Number, po number one, you said that the angel's name was Gabriel. No, Gabriel spoke to Mary. This right here is the angel of the Lord. I mean, you know, Acts chapter 27, verse 23, got my notes here, I wrote, For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, Paul wrote. The angel of the Lord is a reference to Jesus Christ. Okay? The Godhead, the mystery of the Godhead there. She's with child with Jesus, and yet the angel of the Lord comes and says, This is what you name him. Jesus is the name. So you lied. You lied. Oh, it's the angel Gabriel. And maybe, you know, okay, I'll just take that back. Maybe you didn't lie. Maybe you're just confused. Maybe you made a mistake, slip of the tongue, whatever. Drop your pride and admit to being wrong. It's not Gabriel. The name Gabriel does not appear in the text. It's the angel of the Lord. That's very important to understand because it's God that's here saying this. And notice number two here. First of all, I'd like to ask you a question before we go on to another point. Why did you skip verses 21 and 24? Why? Trying to do this neat little thing and show that, you know, Emmanuel is going to be the name in the millennial kingdom and stuff like this. Why would you skip verses 21 and 24? I thought that was kind of interesting. But notice here in uh, verse 22. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophets, saying, Jesus is the name that fulfills the Old Testament prophecy from Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14. Jesus' name is the name that was there. Let me show you. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 through 11. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. When did God give Jesus his name? Hmm? Matthew chapter 1. The angel of the Lord. Verse 10, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father until the millennial kingdom, and then in which time then his name is changed. Well, that's the Sam Gipp version, apparently. You're wrong. Do you understand that? You're wrong. Your neat little thing and stuff like that. Nobody's going to be calling him Emmanuel in the Millennial Kingdom. And so, but we see in Zechariah chapter 8 and things, it's, we see that God is with you. They're seeing that God is with them. That's a, that's a, it's a saying, okay, we can see that God is with you. It's not saying that we can see that your Messiah is over there in Israel and his name is God with you or God with us. You are stretching it big time. And I'll tell you what, it's extremely dangerous because any Jew who comes along that rejects Jesus Christ, they're going to say, well, see, yeah. I wasn't wrong in rejecting him as my Messiah because Emmanuel is the name that we have in the Old Testament. I reject this name of Jesus. That's the danger here. That's the big danger of what you're, you're teaching, you're trying to teach. That's why I say it's a heresy. And you better repent of it because you're messing with the name of Jesus. And that's very, very, very serious. But let's conclude this thing. I have three questions for you. Sam or... Dr. Gip, whatever you want to be called. Okay, three simple questions. I'd like you to answer these three simple questions. Certainly you're man enough to be able to do that, I would think. Question number one. Was the name Emmanuel changed to Jesus because the Jews were preordained to reject Jesus as their Messiah until the millennium? The angel of the Lord comes and says, name him Jesus, when the Old Testament prophecy says Emmanuel. Was that because the Jews, because God knew the Jews were going to reject him until after the time of Jacob's trouble in the millennium. That's my first question. Was Jesus, the name Jesus, given because the Jews were preordained to reject him as their Messiah? Question number two. What name, and this is a good one here, what name will Gentiles call Jesus during the millennium? Simple question. There will be Gentiles there. Zechariah chapter 8. They're taking hold on the skirt of a Jew. There will be Gentiles what are they going to call him? Are they going to call him Emmanuel? <clears throat> Number three, does the Lord switch the name back to Jesus after the millennium because of Revelation chapter 22, verse 16? You can look it up, I'm sure. Why is it that the name Jesus shows up at the end of the book of Revelation going into eternity? Is it 
Emmanuel for the Millennial Kingdom, and then back to Jesus in eternity. Oh, and by the way, uh, on the subject of Stephen Anderson, you are most definitely 100% wrong, Gip. Anderson is not a saved man. I find it very interesting that you talk out of both sides of your mouth, just like a crooked politician. One minute, Anderson's ripping up churches, Anderson's destroying Christians, they're falling away and all this other stuff, but I think he's saved, and I don't want anything bad to happen to him. Excuse me? So a saved man can preach a false gospel that removes repentance, and a saved man can attack the nation of Israel, and a saved man, all the other things that Anderson does, uses profanity, does all this other wicked stuff, and he's saved, but he's still saved, according to you. Well, then that contradicts Scripture, Sam, because Genesis chapter 12, verse 3 says, And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Very well known Scripture. So, if he's a saved man, then how is that working out with God? He hates the nation of Israel. He curses the nation of Israel. God says in His Word, He's going to curse him that curseth thee, the nation of Israel. Anderson does. But you don't want anything bad to happen to his church or his ministry, even though his ministry is hurting other churches, according to you. You better drop your pride, Gip.